regarding China's withdrawal of aid from Albania. 1978, hosted by Espresso Stalinist. Just recently the government of the People's Republic of China announced the decision to withdraw all aid, including military and civil payments of credit, to the People's Socialist Republic of Albania. With this hostile act, the leadership of the government of the People's Republic of China has violated the principles of proletarian internationalism acting in a big power chauvinist manner undermining the fighting capacity of the international proletariat by deliberately interfering with Albania's socialist economy and defense potential. This act can only serve the imperialist, the social imperialist and worldwide reaction. The weakening of the socialist camp was a major maneuver of the Khrushchevite revisionist clique, when it usurped state power, restoring capitalism in the Soviet Union and by so doing rendering a great service to the U.S. imperialists and the whole capitalist world to whom they were making overtures, predifying and openly collaborating with. The polemics of international significance in defense of Marxism-Leninism against the modern revisionist, Khrushchevite and Titoite revisionists, led by the Party of Labor of Albania and the Communist Party of China served to strengthen the socialist fortresses. Going to Moscow with the one banner of Marxism-Leninism, China and Albania braved the storm and a victory for the international proletariat was won mutual aid, mutual respect, joint defense for the purity of Marxism-Leninism in the face of the revisionist betrayal brought about a bond of solid unity based on the principles of proletarian internationalism between the communists and peoples of the Socialist Republic of Albania and People's Republic of China which blazed the trail of struggle and clarified for all genuine Marxist-Leninists, revolutionary and progressive peoples throughout the world, the actual treacherous role of the social imperialist in the Kremlin the Khrushchevite revisionist clique. From this struggle was derived the correct policy to implement towards the social imperialists, proven on the basis of Marxism-Leninism and their treacherous deeds to be as equally barbarous as U.S. imperialism. Unmasking the class capitulationist conduct and policies of the revisionist clique in the Soviet Union, the dealing and wheeling between the Khrushchevite revisionist clique, the Titoite revisionists, and the U.S. imperialists to suppress the national wars of liberation such as in Vietnam, where the Khrushchevite revisionists sated and abetted the U.S. imperialists, while the steeled fists of the workers and oppressed peoples of the world were further welded, the U.S. imperialists and Soviet social imperialists stood out as the main enemies of the peoples of the world. The leadership and guidance given to the international communist movement, the revolutionary and progressive peoples of the world, by the Party of Labor of Albania and the Communist Party of China proved indeed the invincibility of the triumph of the socialist world. The strengthening of the international communist movement was enhanced internationally, the rupture with the old social chauvinist revisionist parties who followed in the footsteps of the Khrushchevite Titoite revisionists was taking place, and all genuine Marxist-Leninists either broke with the old parties and set themselves the tasks of building new ones along new revolutionary lines in accordance with the principles laid down by Lenin and Stalin, or purged their ranks of revisionists and reconstituted genuine communist parties. While it is true, documented in the losses of lives, that the international proletariat and the world's people suffered yet another tremendous setback in its struggle for social progress, in the struggle for a new socialist order, as a result of the revisionist betrayal, the imperialists and social imperialists have suffered defeat after defeat. Many of the victories brought forth by the heroism, self-sacrifice and revolutionary determination of the world's people to free themselves from the yoke of imperialist and social imperialist aggression plunder and rape proved that the strengthening of the socialist camp from where guidance and aid, direct and resolute was given, gained the love and respect of the peoples of the world for the People's Socialist Republic of Albania and the People's Republic of China, who have stood as the advanced detachments of the international proletarian. The application of the principles of proletarian internationalism guided the young but developing communist parties along the correct path. Unity based on the principles of Marxism-Leninism was reached and lines of demarcation were drawn on some fundamental questions of principle which today are being violated. Naturally today all genuine Marxist-Leninists are deeply concerned regarding the hostile act on the part of the Chinese government towards the People's Socialist Republic of Albania 
which speaks to gross violations of the Leninist principles and norms strengthened in the fight against modern revisionism which have guided the international communist movement since the Sino-Soviet split. The Party of Labor of Albania has been a loyal defender of Marxism-Leninism, consistently upholding the teachings of Marx, Engels, Lenin, and Stalin, unswaveringly adhering to the correct verdict past, a true friend of the People's Republic of China defending China against all attacks in times of extreme difficulty, standing with all the revolutionary and progressive peoples of the world. Because of the consistent proletarian internationalist stand of the People's Socialist Republic of Albania, it continues to enjoy the respect and love of the overwhelming majority of the progressive and revolutionary peoples of the world. It is therefore a fantasy, more or so a reactionary dream to think that Albania is isolated and without friends. In fact who is isolated and doomed is imperialism, social imperialism, modern revisionism, and all reaction. Imperialism as a worldwide system is doomed, decaying, on the decline and all those who support it will go down with it. This is the irresistible historical T end. Genuine Marxist-Leninist parties fight not with two or three banners but with the one banner of Marxism-Leninism which teaches us that the world outlook of the international proletariat is proletarian internationalism. On the basis of proletarian internationalism fraternal parties and organizations resolve contradictions on the basis of joint consultation and mutual respect independent of size, population, territorial superiority. The polemics against the Krushkovite Brezhnev Titoite revisionists unmask the splittest and recursed activity of the modern revisionists who resort to the imperialist reactionary tactics of bullying, blackmail, pressure and intimidation, threats based on big power chauvinism. These are the same tactics being used against Albania again, this time by the Chinese government. The truly socialist fortresses cannot be intimidated, blackmailed, bullied or threatened because they are true fighters for the cause of communism and the victory of communism is invincible. One such truly socialist fortress has been and continues to be the People's Socialist Republic of Albania. The Krushkovite revisionists failed in their tactic of blackmail and threats when they tried to starve Albania. The Titoite revisionists failed in their plans to annex Albania and were exposed for the world to see the social imperialists' design of the Yugoslav revisionists. Anyone who so ever attempts to aggress or is entertaining the fantasy that they can swallow Albania is in for sure defeat. The U.S. imperialists are announcing how overjoyed they are at their recent developments and are making grandiose plans. Licking their lips and with wishful thinking they say, the specialists are fairly certain that changes in Albania possibly even in the leadership, will come soon. New York Times, July 30, 1978 The U.S. imperialists are fishing in troubled waters. The leadership of Albania is the Party of Labor of Albania, a historically tested and tempered communist party who has led the Albanian masses through the twists and turns of revolution for national independence for socialist construction and in the consolidation of the dictatorship of the proletariat. The Party of Labor of Albania is led by the tested, tempered and consistent Marxist-Leninist, comrade Enver Hoxha. The vultures, scavengers slash specialists in Washington are barking up the wrong tree, the imperialists and their lackeys are surely running dogs. The steeled-like unity of the Party of Labor of Albania and its solid links with the Albanian masses, has made it impossible for the U.S. imperialists to penetrate it. So their policy has been one to negate that Albania exists. But now they say U.S. interest in Albania is largely limited to strategic considerations. One other consideration would be obtaining consular access to a handful of American citizens who have vanished into Albania in recent years, a State Department official said, Ibid. The U.S. imperialists are anxious to unleash its gang of trained subversives counterinsurgents, trained assassins of the CIA and the rest of its secret political police machinery inside the borders of Albania but has to admit that it has had great difficulty doing so. The international proletariat and world's people must continue and will continue to stand with Albania and in this way aid Albania in its fight against imperialists social imperialists and all reactionaries. We are sure that from the Kremlin similar reports from their specialists are being presented in Pravda concocting similar wishes and plans. Long ago, comrade Enver Hoxha warned all the enemies of the People's Socialist Republic of Albania as to Albania being only one mouthful. Watch out, gentlemen, 
for socialist Albania is a hard bone that will stick in your throat and choke you. These are profound words and no idle threat, gentlemen, because the masses in Albania are prepared, trained, and armed to the teeth to back them up. The Zog regime learned this, the German fascists learned this, the Italian fascists, the Yugoslav revisionists know this and so do all enemies of the People's Socialist Republic of Albania, which are the common enemies of the peoples of the world. Some people seem to have forgotten it, and have resorted to economic pressure with the intent malicious and premeditated to try and intimidate Albania into submitting to capitalist encirclement. This treacherous act arouses the righteous indignation of the world's people and shall be condemned as dirty dealing and wheeling with the imperialists and social imperialists. The U.S. imperialists and Soviet social imperialists are dreaming of extending their tentacles into Albania, historically being unable to do so. They now think this is their chance. Should they dare they will only accelerate their inevitable death. The imperialists and social imperialists working jointly with all reactionaries have been doing everything in their power to instigate a split in the international communist movement. Their frenzied moves of desperation to cause a split intensified since the 7th Party Congress of the Party of Labor of Albania in which comrade Enver Hoxha's report of historic significance elucidated clearly on the basis of Marxism-Leninism the international situation and the corresponding tasks of the international communist movement. Defense Defending the Leninist thesis that we are in the era of imperialism, the era of the triumph of socialism, the era of Leninism. Clearly elucidating the four major contradictions in the world today, their interrelation and interdependence, and showing how the opportunist theory of the non-aligned movement and the theory of the three worlds stands opposed to the Leninist analysis of the worldwide situation by blowing out of proportion the inter-imperialist contradictions making it the only contradiction with the aim of striking an open alliance with the U.S. bourgeoisie and thus erasing the inter-imperialist contradictions and the other three contradictions, promoting the reactionary idea that the world today is represented solely by the capitalist world. Alliances in the international arena are therefore not based on social systems and classes but according to the theoreticians of the three worlds must be based in accordance with those who fight Soviet social imperialism only. This of course, met with the wholehearted approval of the U.S. imperialists, and in a roundabout way with the designs of the Soviet social imperialists who are only too happy to see the realization of the united front of reactionaries. The comradely principled polemics on the basis of Marxism-Leninism and in the defense of its purity, emanating from the one Marxist-Leninist line of the Party of Labor of Albania has served to unite the genuine Marxist-Leninist parties and organizations internationally while striking yet another blow at modern revisionism and right opportunism, the main danger internationally. Who begrudged this? Who has been offended by this? Who is it that has refused to engage in comradely polemics? Who is it that has been attacking Marxism-Leninism and all the norms and principles by which fraternal parties through mutual consultation resolve contradictions? The act of hostility on the part of the leadership and government of the People's Republic of China gives us a clear indication of the answers to these questions playing right into the hands of the worldwide reactionaries, aiding the rabid anti-communist ringleaders the U.S. imperialists, their faithful lapdog Tito, the Soviet revisionists, the West German revanchist government, the Italian fascists, all those who have wanted to settle scores with socialist Albania because of its heroic battle which proved it victorious in the fight against the fascist invaders, the imperialist aggressors, because of its historic battle against modern revisionism. The agents of imperialism inside the communist parties and movements. Albania has held and continues to hold a consistent stance against imperialism, social imperialism and all reaction. Albania aggresses no one, which proves it to be a consistent and loyal friend of all the peace-loving peoples of the world. Albania smashed the myth that small countries could not defend themselves and defeat the imperialist aggressors. Tempered and steeled in its fight against fascism. It defends its territorial integrity, its national sovereignty, its socialist homeland, a history written in blood by the peoples of Albania by their determination to stand on their feet fearing no hardship or sacrifice, with the almighty weapon of Marxism-Leninism in one hand and the gun in the other, and has never in its history as the world is witnessing again today cowed before anyone. This stand of socialist Albania finds it enjoying the support and unity of all genuine communists parties organizations, 
revolutionary and progressive peoples on its side. Why is it then that the Chinese government and leadership accused Albania of ingratitude? Ingratitude is a bourgeois term used by those who see giving aid as charity. But the aid that is given by one socialist country to another is aid stemming from an internationalist duty to strengthen socialism and has no strings attached. In keeping with the principles, aims and goals of proletarian internationalism for the cause of communism. To see it in any other way is big power chauvinism which goes against what Mao Zedong explicitly stressed, that China shall never become a big power chauvinist, shall never seek hegemony. As comrade Wang Hung Wen stated in his report to the 10th Party Congress of China on August 22, 1973, Chairman Mao says, in our international relations, we Chinese people should get rid of great power chauvinism resolutely, thoroughly, wholly and completely. Violating this instruction of Mao Zedong will meet with the opposition of the Chinese people, who have been led and guided in the spirit of proletarian internationalism by Mao Zedong's Communist Party of China. The love and respect which has been forged in this struggle between the two peoples cannot be erased or undermined by accusations of ingratitude. It is love and respect deeply rooted in struggle sacrifice, mutual assistance, mutual aid, in the building of socialism in the interest of abolishing private property, class society, and the exploitation of man by man forever. This love and respect is based on the unshakable conviction of the inevitable triumph of communism. The government and leaders of the People's Republic of China are duty-bound to cancel all hostile big stage chauvinist acts against Albania and to sit down respond to the letters initiated by the Party of Labor of Albania for mutual consultation for the purpose of settling the disputes between the two fraternal parties, which the leaders of the People's Republic of China have to date refused, causing a deterioration in the situation. The initiative to restore fraternal relations rests with the Communist Party of China, who has a responsibility to discontinue the false accusations and on the basis of Marxism. Leninism lay out wherein lie the differences. To continue in the path embarked on, is to totally denounce Marxism, Leninism, which goes against the will of the people, and can only continue to be a mirror of the acts of Khrushchev, of Tito, and all modern revisionists. The Communist Party of China under the correct leadership of Comrade Mao Zedong stood firmly defending the correct verdicts passed in the battle against Khrushchevite Titoite revisionism and in the proposal concerning the general line it is clearly stated, first, the fraternal parties and countries having disputes should take steps however small, that will help ease relations and restore unity, so as to improve the atmosphere and prepare the conditions for the convening and the success of a meeting of the fraternal parties. Page 104. This correct conclusion which was directed towards the Soviet revisionists yesterday is applicable to the Communist Party of China today. Any further postponement of a meeting between the fraternal parties can only aggravate the situation, further damage the relations and further instigate splits. All genuine Marxist-Leninists and revolutionaries internationally understand the need for such a meeting with its historic importance and call upon the Chinese Communist Party to adhere to this stated principle practiced until recently, the Chinese Communist Party has always advocated that when differences on questions of principle arise between fraternal parties the fraternal parties should start with the desire for unity carry on comradely discussions and mutual criticisms so as to distinguish right from wrong and reach the goal of unity on the basis of Marxism-Leninism. Ibid page 100 the peoples of the world fighting heroically for independence, freedom and socialism anxiously await such a meeting between the fraternal parties, which would serve to clarify to distinguish right from wrong and serve to strengthen the fighting capacity of the international proletariat and the masses of oppressed peoples throughout the world. All talk of opposition to imperialist, social imperialist war preparations and the suffering and hardship that the world's people would be subjected to in the case where war between the superpowers would break out is idle chatter if at the same time the instigation of a split in the international communist movement continues. The talk between the fraternal Chinese and Albanian parties would serve to clarify matters and show a desire for unity, thereby undermining the barrage of imperialists, Soviet social imperialist slanders and vilification now being spread with the aim of painting a gloomy picture about the future of the international proletariat, and for the purpose of calling upon the proletariat to unite, to collaborate with the bourgeoisie for its salvation.
but it cannot be the case where exploited and exploiters, oppressor and oppressed can join hands, for the interests are fundamentally different and the two can never merge. This is why the enemies of the international proletariat and the oppressed peoples of the world are desperately trying to sow dissension and spread confusion in the revolutionary ranks, in this way trying to prolong their life of decadence, privileges useless existence and their inevitable doom. This is why history has borne out and is bearing out today again that the agents of imperialism, the modern revisionists, resort to the disruption of unity, intrigues and conspiracies, splitting and wrecking, applying the tactics of the reactionaries the world over, divide and conquer which has been the philosophical outlook of the imperialists for decades. Thus to call oneself a Marxist-Leninist while at the same time undermining the unity of the international communist movement by underhandedly and outrightly attacking friends while uniting with enemies working towards a split within the communist movement is sheer hypocrisy and an act of treason towards the international proletariat. While going through great lengths to send a 32-man delegation including three members of the Central Central Committee of the Communist Party of China to the U.S. to hold talks in Washington with agricultural experts, at the same time a finger has not been lifted to answer the requests of the Party of Labor of Albania to sit down to resolve differences. Is this not a clear indication of overtures towards the U.S. imperialists? Of a policy of class collaboration and a direct violation of the principles of proletarian internationalism. While Brzezinski can hold talks and has had various meetings with the leaders of the government of the People's Republic of China, no time is taken to hold discussions with the Party of Labor of Albania. While Tito is praised to the hilt for being a great statesman and Yugoslavia hailed as a socialist country, socialist Albania is accused of being ungrateful. While the doors of China are being opened wide for tourism they remain shut to the People's Socialist Republic of Albania. While mutual economic ventures are being hailed, concluded, signed and delivered between China and other imperialist countries like Japan, economic aid is withdrawn from Albania. Marxist-Leninists cannot, have not and will not remain silent, going along with the tide as anti-Marxist-Leninist has nothing in common with the lofty aspirations of the people, and could only serve to cover up the intriguing, conspiring, dealing and wheeling of the social chauvinists internationally. If anyone had doubts as to the treachery of the revisionist theory of the three worlds in the class capitulationist essence of its authors, everyday events in the international situation are more than proof of its utter bankruptcy. The historic Seventh Party Congress of the Party of Labor of Albania, the report by Comrade Enver Hoxha, and subsequent polemics such as the polemic the theory and practice of the revolution have been borne out as authentic Marxist-Leninist analysis and conclusions which struck the enemies of Marxism-Leninism with terror and fear in their hearts, and for this they wished to punish Albania, trying to force it on its knees. What a fatal mistake, an adventurous tact, to try to submit the People's Socialist Republic of Albania to intimidation and threats one which they will have to answer for to the international proletariat. Big power chauvinist acts have historically, and today also, aroused the indignation and condemnation of the peoples of the world. The enemies of Marxism-Leninism forget that anyone who has attempted to trample Albania underfoot has met total defeat, both externally and internally, having to confront a small but steeled fist united socialist country like Albania has baffled and proven the paper tiger role of the great big powers who fancy themselves as ever powerful. The experience of the treacherous betrayal of the revisionists in the Soviet Union and their tactics of intimidation, pressure, blackmail and threats remains very fresh on the minds of all revolutionaries throughout the world and will never be forgotten. But some people have never understood this. Still others have forgotten it and so they dare to repeat the same chauvinist and big state arrogance that is so typical of the Soviet social imperialists renegade clique. Enver Hoxha wrote, Our people who have been in dire poverty, who have fought with heroism, who have been murdered and burnt out, had a duty to seek aid of their friends and brothers bigger and economically better off than they. And it was and still is the internationalist duty of their friends to give this aid. Therefore, it is necessary to reject any sinister and anti-Marxist view that anyone may hold about the nature and purpose of this aid. Economic pressure on the Party of Labor of Albania, on the Albanian government and on our people will never be of any avail. Speech delivered at the meeting of 81 Communist and Workers' Parties in Moscow, November 16, 1960. 
It has been 18 years since Enver Hoxha delivered this speech, although in a weaker position then, the People's Socialist Republic of Albania proved that economic pressure was of no avail. In a stronger position today, certainly those who entertain fantasies that the People's Socialist Republic of Albania will in any way retreat from this clear, definite and determined Marxist-Leninist position, is daydreaming. History proved as it is bearing out once again the truth lies with the Albanian side. The conduct on behalf of the Chinese government and leadership warrants the stern criticism of all the genuine Communist parties internationally who have never bitten their tongue in the fight for the truth, in defense of Marxism-Leninism, with the aim of doing everything possible on the basis of Marxism-Leninism and norms of discipline of the international communist movement to set the Chinese government and leadership back onto a correct Marxist-Leninist road from which it has deviated. In conclusion, the U.S. Leninist core has come to the conclusion based on our knowledge of the facts and on the basis of Marxism-Leninism that the government and leadership of the People's Republic of China by withdrawing aid technical advisors and abandoning several important projects from the People's Socialist Republic of Albania is conducting itself in a big state arrogant chauvinist manner, by so doing violating the principles of proletarian internationalism and thereby departing from Marxism-Leninism. We are convinced that the undermining of unity of the international communist movement flows from the revisionist theory of the three worlds and that the acts of pressure blackmail and threats are designed to try to get submission to the social chauvinist, anti-Leninist theory which has already met with the repulsion of all genuine Marxist-Leninist parties and organizations internationally. This latest example of the predicted outcome of the revisionist theory of the three worlds will serve as further negative example and will meet with the intensification of the struggle to beat back its pernicious influence and drive it out of the ranks of the revolutionary proletariat and oppressed peoples of the world. Marxism-Leninism has scored victory upon victory in the battle against revisionism and it will surely score victory once again. Just as socialism, as a worldwide system, cannot be wiped out from the world arena, the international situation is favorable for the peoples who are fighting ever more resolutely for self-determination, breaking the chains of colonial and neo-colonial slavery. While the proletariat in the capitalist countries in alliance with the national liberation struggles will triumph in its struggle for proletarian revolution, the worldwide system of imperialism is locked in the most devastating general crisis of its existence from which it cannot escape. It will only serve to accelerate its inevitable doom. The inter-imperialists' contradictions are sharpening, ever more so, this also weakens imperialism. The bourgeoisie of the superpowers and the second-rate imperialist countries are in trouble, through summit meetings, NATO meetings, through pulling the strings of their puppets in the non-aligned movement conferences, they are trying to give the impression that all is well in the capitalist world. But the truth is that all is not well and in the dog-eat-dog -dog world of capitalism the scrambling over and competing for who will come up top dog serves to deepen their problems. The international proletariat makes use of this rift in the enemy camp to strengthen its own strategic position by accelerating proletarian revolution on a worldwide scale, by struggling to defeat one's own bourgeoisie in each and every country. The theory of the three worlds on the contrary, has been concocted to try and resolve the problems of the bourgeoisie internationally, apologize for its mistakes, covering its colonial and neo-colonial policies attempting to give respite to a rotten and disintegrating corpse which has no salvation. Part and parcel of assisting the agonizing international reactionary bourgeoisie is the act of big power arrogance which led to the withdrawal of aid from the People's Socialist Republic of Albania, while openly collaborating with Tito and therefore, with U.S. imperialism, the oldest bastion of reaction internationally, which has earned it the hatred of all progressive, revolutionary peoples of the world and anyone who assists it is surely to be recognized as belonging to the enemy camp. The contradiction between the socialist world and the capitalist world is laying bare the inevitable truth of the triumph of socialism on a worldwide scale. It is all these contradictions, interrelated which are further testimony of Lenin's behest and his genius conclusion that imperialism is the eve of the socialist revolution. Yet it is here and now when proletarian revolution advances forward that the act of desperation by the enemies of communism, the acts of outright hostility, 
intrigue and conspiracy are being mounted. The unity of the socialist camp is an unbreakable unity and its enemies will suffer sure defeat. The invincibility of the socialist world was borne out with the victory of the earth-shaking 1917 October Revolution. The wheels of history cannot be reversed. The enemies of the international proletariat by entertaining the reactionary aspirations of all the exploiting classes who think that socialism will perish, fail to understand that all of the damage done is temporary and that they will pay with their lives for the acts of treason towards the international proletariat. Just like Trotsky, Kotsky, Liu Shaoqi, Lin Piao, Earl Browder, Prests, Khrushchev, Brezhnev, Tito, have all earned themselves the fitting title of traitors, despised, hated scabs and agents of international reaction. They will be joined by all their predecessors who will meet with the same fate which their forefathers met. The inevitable victory belongs to the international proletariat. In the final analysis, the enemies of the proletariat constitute a small, though dangerous, minority who will keep making trouble for as long as class society exists. But rest assured socialism and communism shall be triumphant. We conclude with this quote of a speech by comrade Enver Hoxha which clearly expresses the party of labor of Albania's and People's Socialist Republic of Albania's position in regard to its consistent stance in regards to enemies and friends. The two superpowers are gripped in a great economic, cultural, and spiritual crisis. Their regimes and ideologies are riddled with corruption. No one trusts them any longer. But by means of demagogy, they impose themselves on the other capitalist countries who have become so completely caught up in the webs the two imperialist superpowers have spun, that without a general uprising of the people, they will never be able to free themselves of these bonds. Naturally, the two imperialist superpowers and those who have been caught in their webs want to load the terrible consequences of the crisis onto the working people of their countries. This gives rise to the conflicts of state with state and between rulers and peoples. But the people must not expect others to rescue them from their sufferings. They must save themselves, because, when it comes to defending themselves against the people's revolution, the capitalist revisionist leaders always unite with one another. When they see the game is up the capitalists throw off all disguise and establish their fascist dictatorships. That is what some states are doing now, whereas some other did it long ago. There are all sorts of slogans and demagogy, but people must be judged by their deeds and not by appearances. The two superpowers have armed themselves to the teeth while making propaganda for others to disarm. On the other hand they have become the biggest dealers in arms. This may seem contradictory but it isn't. In fact, they sell arms to others, but the modern weapons they keep for themselves, always preserving due proportions to maintain their superiority. And they supply weapons only to those on whom they feel their grip is sure. They exploit arms sales, on the one hand, to suck the blood and plunder the wealth of other nations, while posing as friends so as to worm their way into their homes where they take over, and on the other hand, to incite these countries to fight with their neighbors. The United States and the Soviet Union stir up strife everywhere, revive ancient feuds, and try to weaken any resistance they might meet. Meanwhile, in their own interest they stir up conflicts accompanying these with the alleged defense, first of one then of the other beating their breasts and swearing great oaths, demanding the convening of the Security Council with the greatest fervor until, at last, the bubble bursts. Here comrade Enver Hoxha clearly shows how both superpowers are to the same degree and to the same extent the instigators and main source of a world war. Enver Hoxha continues, on what does the security of the peoples of Europe and the world depend? Does it depend on the public or mysterious journeys of a certain Kissinger, a certain Gromyko? or the scheming of a Brezhnev, who has made the Soviet and other peoples bleed, or the travels of a Nixon who drowns the world in blood and leads the American mafia in a disgraceful Watergate scandal, which shook the whole of America. Should it be left to such as these to ensure the future of the world? A fine future it would be. Of course those who believe in tragic illusionists are free to go to meetings in Vienna, Helsinki, or anywhere they like. Let them palaver with one another. But on our part, we, too, are free not to go to these meetings, and we are not going. At these meetings and conferences it is not only we who are absent, but the peoples, too. This is significant for us. But perhaps someone will ask, what do the Albanians suggest, what must we do? The Albanians state their views every day. They are clear to all who want to hear. The Albanians say, 
Any dish mixed with poison should not be eaten because it will kill you. It should be rejected and thrown out. There are those who say, but what can we do about the Americans and the Soviets? They are powerful, should we shut the door to them? The Albanians say, not only should we shut them out but we must isolate them and put them in a straitjacket. This is a wish, they say, but reality is another matter. But we Albanians declare that we must turn this wish into reality. If you submit to the Soviet-American dictate, then you cannot escape their yoke. We Albanians accept neither their dictate nor their yoke. We are determined to fight on to victory. There are some who, when they hear us, smirk and sneer. How swell-headed these Albanians are. They want to put the world to rights. But who are the people who speak like this? They are the ones who want to dominate the world and its peoples who do not like it when the peoples raise their voice against them. They are the ones who are used to look down on the peoples and ordering them around with bullets and whips. And it is they who pose as the most unpretentious people on earth. We say to them we are not swell-headed, but we are the soldiers of that great and powerful army which is making the revolution of which they are so afraid and which will be the end of them. This revolution is not a movement of yes men and slaves, of bowing and scraping, but is the powerful blow. The continuation of the Great October Revolution, it is the Great Chinese Proletarian Cultural Revolution, the People's Liberation Wars. All this they call pretension and arrogance. They don't like it because it cuts the ground from under, and destroys the structure they have erected on human corpses. Weakened by its internal contradictions and gripped in grave and all-round crises, under the relentless blows of the forces of the revolution, national liberation, democracy and social progress. The capitalist revisionist world is staggering towards ever greater degeneration and decomposition. The bourgeoisie is trying to restrain the present crisis and save itself from catastrophe and to preserve its profits intact by throwing the burden onto the working class and the masses. This line is bound to bring about the revolt of the proletariat and all those oppressed and exploited by capital. The working masses, the most conscious forces, will assuredly rise to their feet to defend their vital interests and turn this crisis situation into one favorable to the advancement of the cause of the revolution. The revolution and the struggle for political and economic independence, constitute an unceasing historical process. The present conditions of the social development of the world drive them forward with ever greater force and make them indispensable. And this constitutes the guarantee for their triumph. The Albanian people and all the peoples of the world nurture an ardent love for, and have great faith in, socialist China her glorious party, and Mao Zedong, the respected and beloved leader of the Chinese people and the Chinese communists, respected and beloved also by all the peoples and communists of the world. This infuriates modern revisionism, headed by the renegades in Moscow, who in unity with U.S. imperialism are waging a fierce and diabolical struggle to oppose the peoples in China. This does not surprise us. It is in conformity with their logic. The greatest enemy of U.S. imperialism and Soviet social imperialism are the peoples of the world, headed by the great China of Mao Zedong. The struggle is being waged between freedom and socialism on the one hand, and slavery and aggressive imperialism of the two superpowers on the other. All the peoples of the world have based their hopes for liberation, independence and well-being on their own strength and on Mao's China. They are not mistaken and this conviction of theirs is based not on propaganda, but on a mighty reality which shines like the light of the sun, on the construction of socialism in China, which is being realized in a correct way, according to the doctrine of Marx and Lenin and the teachings of Mao Zedong. It is based on the resolute political stand of the People's Republic of China in the international arena on the concrete moral political economic help it gives the peoples of the world. This reality wrecks and exposes the gangster-like fascist propaganda of Moscow and Washington. The peoples of the world, who suffer on their own backs the evil doing of the two superpowers, see and understand that beside them stands the great Marxist-Leninist Mao Zedong. They see with what sincerity and fraternal love socialist China stands close to them. The unity with people's China is a great victory for the cause of mankind. Old and young should be aware and understand that socialism, the revolution, the people's liberation, are forging ahead because great socialist China continues unswervingly on this road. This is to the liking of neither the Soviet and American imperialists, 
nor of world reaction as a whole. They have declared war on us. But we are stronger than they and will defeat them. The wheel of the revolution cannot be turned in reverse. Of late, the People's Republic of China has celebrated the 25th anniversary of its founding. It has come to this glorious jubilee with a series of colossal achievements in all fields. Relying on its own efforts, Great China has made continuous progress in the development of its socialist economy, and today it has built a modern industry, an advanced socialist agriculture, and is forging ahead with each passing day towards ever higher peaks. This progress, unprecedented in the life of the Chinese people, has not been achieved without overcoming countless difficulties and obstacles. To achieve these successes, the fraternal Chinese people have had to make heroic efforts and wage fierce class struggles at home and in the international arena. An unparalleled revolutionary situation has been created in the People's Republic of China following the Great Proletarian Cultural Revolution, initiated and led by comrade Mao Zedong in person. In the course of this revolution the masses, hundreds of millions strong, exposed and turned to dust and ashes the treacherous gang of Lu Shaoqi, the short work of the counter-revolutionary plot of the traitor, careerist, and agent of the Soviet revisionists, Lin Piao, defended the victories of the revolution, consolidated the dictatorship of the proletariat, and now have got down to work to implement the historic decisions of the 10th Congress of their party and to develop unceasing struggle against the reactionary ideas of Confucius and Lin Piao. Under the leadership of her Communist Party and Chairman Mao Zedong, People's China has been transformed into a powerful socialist state, with great economic and military potential and high international prestige and authority. Our people and party wholeheartedly hail these brilliant achievements and wish to see them increased and multiplied for the good of the fraternal Chinese people and the revolution in the world. The People's Republic of Albania, our people, our party of labor of Albania, our loyal friends, close friends and comrades, faithful allies of the People's Republic of China, the fraternal Chinese people, and the glorious Communist Party of Mao Zedong's China. We are united by our common ideals, we are united forever by Marxism-Leninism, we are united by our common roads in the construction of socialism, we are united in the struggle against our common enemies, by our identical duties in the spirit of proletarian internationalism. Only the enemies of Marxism-Leninism, the enemies of the world's people, the imperialists, the social imperialists, all modern revisionists and reactionaries the world over have done everything to undermine, have begrudged, have been opposed to the steeled like unity, to this ardent love, respect, between the two fraternal socialist countries, trembling at their knees, shaking from head to toe, the imperialists, social imperialists, most especially the American Soviet ringleaders of the counter-revolution fearful of their inevitable death and foaming at the mouth like wolves have plotted, conspired, done everything using every avenue opened to them, playing their usual dirty part in the changes that have taken place. The damaging in any way of this fraternal relationship only aids the blood-sucking designs of the U.S. imperialists. Soviet social imperialists and all world reaction. They clearly saw that on the basis of Marxism Leninism, on the basis of the leadership given in both socialist countries by two tested, tempered vanguard detachments of the international proletariat, Mao Zedong's Communist Party of China, the Party of Labor of Albania led by comrade Enver Hoxha, that neither the Albanian communists and people, Chinese communists and people would be divided from each other. And that this unity proved to the peoples of the world that the socialist world, that the building of socialism represents the lofty aspirations of all those who fight for freedom, independence, democracy, for a new and better world. The masses throughout the world saw this, not by decree, but precisely because of the deeds of that steeled like unity of the two socialist fortresses, because it represented that friendship. That comradeship that existed between Marx and Engels, between Lenin and Stalin, between the Soviet Union of Lenin and Stalin and the people of the world. This is why whosoever has collaborated or collaborates with international counter-revolution shall be smashed in the face by the iron fist of the international proletariat and oppressed masses. Comrade Enver Hoxha continues in his speech, Our socialist collaboration is being developed as it should be between good comrades, with Marxist-Leninist sincerity and understanding. We help each other in all fields, in every way, and with all our means. This aid and collaboration yields fine fruit for our people and our country, 
China gives us unsparing and totally disinterested aid to develop our industry, intensify our socialist agriculture, strengthen our country all round, and raise the well-being of our people. We see this reality every day in our thermal and hydroelectric power stations, our plants and combines, in the tractors and the railways, we see it in the harmonious and mutually beneficial cultural, commercial, and other exchanges. The situation is that everybody in our country, young and old, dearly loves the Chinese people and Mao Zedong. And it is the same in China, go where you will there, you have only to say that you are Albanian and all hearts and doors are open to you. Everywhere you will find ardent love for the Albanian people and the party of labor of Albania. It is our great and vital duty to preserve and strengthen this friendship, day by day, on the Marxist-Leninist road. And Verhoxa, our policy is an open policy the policy of proletarian principles, October 3, 1974 pgs.21-31. It is certainly clear to see that not only has Albania been grateful, but thoroughly loyal on perseverant and strengthening this friendship, on the only basis which it can be upheld and defended, on the basis of Marxism-Leninism, on the basis of proletarian principles. Indeed the truth lies on the Albanian side. Long live Marxism-Leninism, long live Comrade Enver Hoxha, the party of labor of Albania, the People's Socialist Republic of Albania. Long live the great proletarian cultural revolution of the People's Republic of China. LED by Mao Zedong's glorious Communist Party of China, long live the fraternal unity of the communists and peoples of the People's Socialist Republic of Albania and the People's Republic of China. Workers and oppressed peoples of the world unite.